Okay, good day everybody and welcome to the SO Show. Uh, today uh, we are going to introduce uh, the intelligent energy storage system of Blue Nova. And we are going to look at a particular application in the off-grid scenario. So uh, this presentation will cover an introduction to our energy or intelligent energy storage system. We're looking at the off-grid uh, scenario specifically. We'll talk a little bit about maintenance and support of the system some warranty issues, and then finally we'll have a conclusion. Okay, so introducing the ICE and what it is, essentially the ICE stands for an intelligent energy storage system, which unlike a normal battery system, includes a battery inverter. This battery inverter allows the battery then to be charged as well as to be discharged. And that is basically what an ESS system does. If we look at the sources, uh, you can charge the battery with a PV array, with some wind energy, some generator, or even the grid. And then if we look at discharging the battery, we can have applications like residential loads, commercial loads, industrial loads, even EV stations. So in this particular presentation, we will be looking at, let's call it residential commercial loads in an off-grid scenario. Uh, what's uh, particularly uh, interesting or some uh, specific features of the system that the ICE system comes in an isometric 6 meter or 12 meter container. It utilizes lithium ferrophosphate high cycle batteries, which gives us fantastic efficiencies in life cycles and cost, low cost. It includes a battery management system, an integrated AC distribution board, some environmental management systems to control the temperatures. An energy management system that allows the system to optimize between solar and diesel and grid. Uh, a fire suppression system in case of, uh, in the event of a component failure. We, we're using lithium batteries which are inherently safe, the ferrophosphate batteries. However, we are dealing with large power with interconnected wiring and that poses a fire risk. And so we offer the system with an integrated fire suppression system. We offer remote monitoring effortless logistics and a modular approach that allows you to take the ice and scale it all the way up into the megawatt power and megawatt hour storage domain. Typical applications for an ice system is some peak shaving in the industrial domain, some load shifting where, where peak demand charges are very high. We'll deal with that in another presentation. We can do voltage and frequency stabilization we can even uh, manage a microgrid, like in the case uh, of the off-grid system, like we are talking about in this presentation. And also the system can be used as a backup system in the case of grid failure. So let's look particularly at uh, uh, an example in the off-grid scenario. That is a system that we recently deployed in the um, northern part of Namibia, about 250 kilometers north of Vintuk. Uh, this picture just basically shows you what the terrain looks like. We have the investor's house on the left-hand side. We have the reception area. And then the plan is to develop a, an exclusive 12-room uh, lodge system uh, situated uh, on the slopes of the hill, as you see in that picture. So a true off-grid scenario. How, does it, how is it cat categorized? Well, number one, there is no grid connection for tens of tens of kilometers. The second thing is the primary source for this uh, application is the sun, solar PV system. And then, like any off-grid system, we'll be using a generator as a backup in the event of the photovoltaic system failure, maintenance, or even in bad weather scenarios where we do not have enough solar production to actually meet the demands uh, of the plant. Of course, we would like to optimize uh, the production of the solar versus the gen generator in the event of inadequate PV production, optimizing the generator production together with the solar production leads to significant savings in the diesel consumption. Another uh, important thing is that if the user intends to add some additional solar generation capability onto the microgrid, then that's, those elements need to be controlled and this system offers a micro grid management solution. The design life typically 15 to 25 years in a scenario like this with the solar panels in the 25 year domain. 
and all the inverters and battery components in the sort of 15 year domain. So that is the, the approach is to design a system for that type of operational life. The use of the system, yes, used daily, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is the, the typical application for 15 to 25 years. No real off time uh, happening here. Of course, the maintenance cost has to be as low as possible to make the cost of ownership of such a system reasonable and acceptable. In the case of a failure, we would like to be able to repair the system as soon as possible. You'll be talking about turnaround times of a day or two, and not weeks and months. And so we have to develop the logistic lines so that we can have this very quick, rapid, um, or, or low mean time to repair. System inherently has to have high reliability, otherwise the economics doesn't make sense. And here is a very important point, the ability to expand all the major components, which is the PV production, the energy storage capability, as well as the power delivery capability of the system, needs to be able to be expanded going on to the future as the client's demand, the energy requirements and power requirements uh, increases as we go along. And then finally, the levelized cost of energy as used by the customer has to be completely affordable it doesn't make sense to have this massive expensive uh, power station uh, on off-grid application uh, which which sort of tends to be in the region of um, the cost of, of diesel so we want to be two three four times cheaper than that and I'll get a, uh, I have a special slide uh, addressing the LCOE levelized cost of energy specifically so let's look at the system the system that we are talking about here, or the, the uh, example, as a 280 kilowatt peak solar array that uh, is being installed just uh, north of, of Vintuk. And together with those PV array uh, systems, we have these five 60 kilowatt peak um, AC coupled MPPTs. Each one of these MPPTs have got a six channel input. So we have ability of dealing with at least 30 arrays in a scenario like this. And then we have the battery inverter and storage component, which is the uh, integrated ESS or the ICE system as we call it, that is deployed uh, on a, a, a cement slab as you can see in the picture there. So let's just look at the components of the ICE system as deployed uh, on this specific site. The picture is depicting here some screens. You see the battery management system on the top left. We see the energy management system on, on, the, on the right hand side of the image and then uh, towards the center the yellow high uh, performance lithium ferrophosphate cells so if we look at the details in this particular case we've deployed a six meter containerized uh, system this system particularly has been deployed with a 250 kilowatt battery inverter although it's possible of deploying them with 100 or even 500 kilowatt uh, inverter systems. The system comprised uh, in this specific case of a one megawatt hour lithium ferrophosphate battery pack, although it's possible to provide energy storage from 140 kilowatt hours all the way up to 1.5 megawatt hours in such a six meter isometric container. The battery system has got an integrated battery management system which allows for the monitoring of the temperatures and voltages and all environmental conditions that could lead uh, to damage to the batteries, which then will trigger the self-protection system to protect the battery from being overcharged or over discharged. The system comes with an energy management system, which I referred to previously, which allows the system to start and stop generator and also to control the charge rates going into the battery under this sort of dual use uh, in the hybrid scenario when you use the generator together with the inverter. The system has got a remote monitoring and control which allows us to monitor and control the system remotely from anywhere in the world. In this particular case our control center in Johannesburg although the system is deployed in Namibia. The system comes with an integrated thermal management system which controls both the AC chamber which is where the inverter is as well as the DC compartment where all the high voltage DC components are. 
second. Yeah. Okay. Um, this system comes with an internal electrical distribution system, which allows the system to be connected to the PV components as well as the AC distribution board where the loads are connected. As I mentioned before, a fire integrated fire suppression system in both the AC and DC compartments. We also offer the system with an access control uh, component, which controls the personnel that enter the, the two different compartments, which ensures that the necessary safety and security measures are adhered to. And then finally, the system is offered with a 10 year performance warranty, although that the components, and I'm speaking specifically about the ICE here, the solar system obviously has longer uh, uh, performance warranty, but the ICE component we're offering with a 10 year warranty on all the components, including the inverters, as well as the lithium battery. So just having a quick look at the transportation and installation uh, effort required. The system, as I said, is a isometric container, which can be easily loaded on trucks, on ships, on rail, and then quite easily deployed by means of the lifting, hydraulic lifting mechanisms as seen in the picture on, uh, on this uh, slide. This is the final deployment of the ESA system at the Tambila site in Namibia. And one can see it's fairly simple. Uh, you, you can see the addition of the, the sunshade or the solar reflect on top of the container to provide extra thermal uh, protection. So let's look at the levelized cost of energy. And so the slide depicts uh, a various uh, energy sources like the grid, some hydroelectric, solar PV, wind, diesel, solar PV, uh, as well as diesel. So I'm going to take you particularly to the to the, uh, the little element shown in the, the black circle around the solar PV side. And what we can see is that the cost of solar is significantly less than the cost of diesel. And in the off-grid scenario, those are your two sources. So if one looks at generating electricity with a diesel generator, Depending on the location and the distances uh, between the, the, the site and the diesels, uh, diesel depots, one could be looking at the cost of diesel, anything between 6 Rand per kilowatt hour of electricity production, all the way up to as high as 10 Rand per kilowatt hour. If one consider the solar PV on its own, that means just grid tied solar generation, Costs uh, are, are confirmed in the region of about 1 Rand per kilowatt hour up to about 1 Rand 30, depending on the size of the site. If one then looks at the, the integrated energy storage component, the cost of ownership over a 13-year period is in the region of about 1 Rand to 2 Rand per kilowatt hour, depending on the size of the storage. And I must just repeat that. Look at the, the cost of, of ownership of an ESS system in the region of 1 Rand to two rand per kilowatt hour. Okay, let us just then look at what the system looks like in terms of a power source and what the cost is. So if we add an ice system to a solar PV system, we're looking at a cost of producing electricity in the region of two rand 50 to two rand 80 per kilowatt hour, which is fixed for more than 13 years. And I repeat that, that means there is no escalation in the cost. There is obviously a capital acquisition that's required, but that would be the cost, the average cost to produce a kilowatt hour in the region of 2 Rand 50 to 2 Rand 80, compared to a diesel generator that is running between 6 and 10 Rand per kilowatt hour. And obviously some of the main benefits of such a solar PV plus ice comp combination is the fact that while it's running, there is no pollution, there's no noise, and uh, finally the gen set will only be started in case where there is a lack of uh, solar production, and not as a general operation principle. Okay, let's look at the maintenance and support. Um, I think one of the significant features of the maintenance and support that we're offering is that the system comes with a comprehensive built-in test equipment capability. Every single system is monitored, and we have both warning and alarm 
uh, signals that can be sent locally to the local depot as well as the international um, uh, center that uh, call center that we have in Johannesburg that monitors the systems. We also look at the solar production as well as the charge and discharge efficiencies of the system and how the system operates in order to see whether the system is in actual fact performing according to the specifications. This is done on a daily basis and if any deviation is observed, there the necessary interaction and, uh, and, and improvements and adjustments is made to the system. Looking at the support and repair response policy or, or, or uh, services, we're offering a spares for the components of the systems uh, in country in order to, to increase our response times. We uh, will appoint a local support agent which uh, reduces the turnaround times and response times uh, in the case of a system failure. We offer scheduled maintenance on a regular basis to ensure that all the components are, are in the correct operational state. And we offer a service level agreement in various categories, which can then increase the response time as well as to reduce the mean time to repair in the, in the event of a failure. Okay, so. Uh, let's have a look at the ICE warranty. What, we, what we're offering here is a 10-year performance warranty, unlike most of the, the warranties one sees, um, which are workmanship warranties. So what we are saying is that if you charge the battery, typically in three hours, discharge it in four hours, although the typical discharge would be at night, which is a 10 to 14 hour discharge. But if you do discharge it faster, you discharge it to 80% DOD on a daily basis, you will, uh, and you can operate it between minus 10 and 60 degrees Celsius. What we are saying is that the battery system will retain more than 80% of its initial capacity after 5,000 cycles. So what we're saying is that more than 80% will be retained after 13 years. And when we look at this after 10 years, we can guarantee that the system will have that capacity retention. In the event of a failure or anything that goes wrong in the system, our warranty response uh, is, is built around a rapid response strategy. We keep spares uh, in the country. We keep uh, spare lithium cells as well as all com uh, uh, components of, of the batteries. We also keep spare components uh, of the inverter and all the AC and DC uh, distribution board items. So we're capable of responding with repair in country on site in a couple of days. So finally, if we look at the summary of the ICE and the off-grid application, we have proven technology that has been used in both the battery energy storage as well as the inverters for more than 15 years. It's a highly reliable system. The components are used in applications where the availability has to be more than 99.5% per year. You've seen and I've demonstrated the ease of deployment as well as maintenance of the system. We have a very low uh, levelized cost of energy. I indicated as low as 2 Rand to 2 Rand 50 per kilowatt hour produced, uh, which makes it extremely affordable uh, for off-grid applications. And we're offering an excellent support and maintenance infrastructure with remote monitoring. So I thank you for joining us here at the Solar Show. And uh, we hope to continue with uh, discussions. Please um, make some, some notes on our contact details. And uh, we're looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.